Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with strawberry jam. That's right, I'm going to show you my favorite method for making strawberry jam, which believe it or not uses much less sugar than your typical recipe. And you may think the reason is because I'm watching my calories, which it's not. Or that sugar is really bad for you, which it is. No, it's simply the fact I like my strawberry jam to taste more like fresh strawberries than strawberry candy. The only problem is, however, when you reduce sugar in a jam recipe, sometimes we end up with something very soupy and more like a strawberry sauce. Which is why our first step here is making something I'm calling the pectin puree. And we'll begin that by roughly chopping up three or four apples. So I went ahead and quartered that up. And other than maybe trimming out that little stem piece, just in case that's poisonous, we're actually going to chop and use the entire apple, core, pits and all. And by the way, don't worry too much about precision knife work here. Once this stuff is chopped, we're basically going to cook it until it falls apart. And then besides the apples, we'll also add another pectin-rich fruit, one large lemon. And just like the apple, we're going to use all of it. And the reason we're creating what I'm calling a pectin puree is because not only does using less sugar pose a little bit of a challenge getting this to firm up, but also strawberries are very low in pectin. So by creating this, we're going to help ourselves out with both those issues. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and roughly chop up one lemon, and I ended up doing three apples total. And we'll go ahead and transfer that into a saucepan, along with a big splash of nice cold fresh water. And then once that's set, what we'll do is head over to the stove, where we're going to bring this mixture up to a boil covered over high heat. And then what we'll do as soon as we see that mixture bubbling is give it a stir, reduce our heat to medium, and let it cook covered for about 30 minutes or so, or until our fruit gets very, very soft and basically collapses. So we'll go ahead and reduce our heat and let that cook, maybe give it a stir once in a while just to be safe. And since that is going to take about a half hour or so, we might as well use that time to prep our strawberries. Or as they say in the country, hull our strawberries. And there's basically two methods you can go with here. You can use the super fast prep cook method, where we trim the top off by making a straight cut like this. Which is really fast and works great if you have to do like four cases of strawberries. But you do lose a little bit of the fruit. So if you have a little bit of extra time and a small pointy knife, you can use this method where we just stick that tip in and kind of rotate it around which is going to let us remove that green part without losing too much of the strawberry. So really, it comes down to how much time you want to invest. Both methods will work, so that's going to be up to you. You are, after all, the Chris Mullen of Strawberry Hullen. And also, go Dubs. But anyway, using mostly the second method, I went ahead and trimmed up three pounds of strawberries. At which point, and by the way, this is optional, I'm going to transfer those into my food processor and pulse it on and off until basically I have a coarse puree. And sure, if you want, you could hand chop these which is kind of crazy. Or you can not process or chop and just simply use the berries whole, smashing them with a potato masher as they cook. But for me, pureeing them first provides the best texture and appearance in the finished jam. So that's what I'm gonna do. And once that's set, we'll go ahead and transfer that into our saucepan. And that's it, our strawberries have been officially prepped. So we'll set that aside and head back to the stove to check our pectin puree, which is cooked for about 30 minutes now. And as you can see, that fruit is very soft and is pretty much collapsed. And assuming that yours looks pretty much the same, what we'll do at this point is take it off the heat and pass that through a fine strainer, which of course is going to catch all those pits and other fibrous material. And by the time we've pressed everything through with the back of a spoon or spatula, we should end up with about a cup and a half of what looks like a very thin applesauce. And by the way, for those of you wondering, yes, you can just buy some powdered or liquid pectin, but unlike our method, that doesn't add any extra flavor. Plus, how often do you make jam? Okay, you're going to buy the pectin and just use a little bit. And then the rest just sits in your pantry, taking up space for a few years. So I really do prefer this method. But anyway, once that's strained, we'll go ahead and add that to our prep strawberries. And we can also at this point go ahead and stir in half our sugar. And I have no idea why I went with a freakishly small wooden spoon. It was a terrible choice for this job. But I regret nothing. And then what we're going to want to do is set our heat to medium high and bring this up to a simmer. At which point we'll reduce our heat to medium. And then what the plan is here is we're going to let this simmer for about 15 minutes before we mix in the rest of the sugar. And by the way, I learned this recipe so long ago, I forget why we add the sugar in two additions, but I'm assuming there's a great reason. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cook for about 15 minutes. And during that time, we want to do a couple things. We want to go ahead and skim off any of that light color foam that comes to the top, as well as we're going to try to find the sweet spot with how much heat to use. Okay, I said reduce to medium, but it might actually be a little under or a little over that on your stove. But bottom line for the rest of this recipe is we want to use as high a heat as we can get away with without our mixture boiling over or splattering everywhere. So it's going to be somewhere around medium, but you're going to have to adjust. And then what we'll do after that's cooked for about 15 minutes and we've skimmed off the foam is we'll go ahead and mix in the rest of the sugar. 
And as you can see, I've switched to a whisk, which is a much smarter tool for this. And then once all our sugar is in, the rest of this recipe is as easy as it is time consuming. Since basically all we're gonna do is continue cooking, stirring the mixture very often with a spatula or whisk, until it's reached a temperature of exactly 220 degrees, which believe it or not, took me well over an hour. So yes, it is gonna take some time, but other than stirring every few minutes, you don't really have to do anything except watch it reduce, and every once in a while, check with the thermometer to see how you're doing. Oh, and I should mention in the blog post, I'm gonna give you a little tip on how to tell if this is done without using a thermometer. So if you don't have one, don't worry, you can still make this. And this is exactly what mine looked like when I reached that magical temperature. And as you can see by the jam already on the thermometer, I've been checking along the way. But anyway, what we're gonna do at this point is turn off the heat, because we have one last thing to do. With the heat off, we're gonna whisk in exactly one teaspoon of fresh lemon juice. And that's it, our strawberry jam is done and ready to jar, which I always suggest doing while the mixture is hot. And that is pretty much it. We'll simply let that cool down to room temp, at which point we should pop that in the fridge for at least a day to give that sugar and pectin time to work its magic and tighten our jam up. And if everything's gone according to plan, a day or two later, our strawberry jam should look and feel like this. Check it out, even though we only used about half the amount of sugar and no added pectin, our jam has gelled beautifully. This is firmed up enough to spread, but isn't rubbery. So I just love the texture of this stuff, almost as much as the flavor. Like I said in the intro, I like my jam to taste like fresh strawberries, not like strawberry candy. And to me, that's exactly what this tastes like. And of course, since we just made clotted cream, I decided to end the video by pretending it was tea time, which I believe in England is every afternoon at 420. The folks wait for Big Ben to ring, at which point they brew tea to serve with scones and crumpets. So I enjoyed some real gray tea, along with some freshly baked biscuits, which I believe they call scones because they call cookies biscuits and french fries chips. But anyway, that's it. How to make your own homemade fresh strawberry jam. Sure, it takes a long time and you'll probably get a couple burns from splattering jam. But when you taste this stuff, especially on some homemade clotted cream, I believe you'll agree it's all totally worth it. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.